Joining me now to talk more about the Greece debt crisis is Paolo Moro. He's the senior fellow at the Peterson Institute of International Economics. And um, here we are again. We're back at Greece. Now, this time it's different, right? They had an election, different groups in charge. They've got different demands. So for our audience, let's, let's be fair. What is Greece asking for exactly? Well, I think that Greece is asking for time uh, to sort of reassess a little bit the path in terms of the policies that it wants to undertake. Remember that uh, we're coming from a situation in which uh, the previous government has signed an agreement which goes into some very specific policies uh, involving fiscal policies, but also reforms of products, uh, opening up some professions, privatization, and this is a completely new government. It has a different philosophy, and it's asking the opportunity to reassess whether it, those are really the policies See, and, that it wants and, to pursue. And, and, and here is where it gets a little crazy, because the previous government has agreed on X. New government wants something different. They're not exactly sure what they want, but they know they don't want what the previous government had originally negotiated. Germany just came out and said, no, we're not going to do an extension, but they didn't close the door on the current discussion that's happening right now. What's Germany thinking? And from the point of view of the creditors, of course, they don't want to be in a limbo. They want to make sure that over the next months, they know the policies that make them comfortable that Greece is ultimately going to remain engaged and able to grow, but also to repay the debts that are owed to the uh, other European countries and ultimately to the other European taxpayers. So obviously the priority now is that, uh, as I said before, last time was was here, uh, it's, it's really a priority that they come to an agreement soon. And of course the clock is ticking. Uh, and uh, the, the, we're the hoping new administration, it's going to The new administration came into office because the public voted that they were sick and tired of austerity, meaning they didn't want to see the budget cuts, they wanted pu more public employees, they wanted the sort of more socialism, if you will, they wanted the reversal of all the cuts and budget cuts that took place because they had to borrow money, and that was part of the agreement. Now, if they were to reverse all of this, or even part of it for that matter, does it set a precedence that the next time a country gets into trouble, who's gonna come to the rescue, knowing that if I give you money, I give you my credit card, feel free to, to do what you wanna do, but you've gotta pay me back, and you say, you know, I'm not gonna pay you back three years later, I'm never gonna give you the credit card ever again. I mean, does it not set a wrong precedence? Well, one way to look at it is to think about whether it sets a precedent. The other way to look at it is whether, uh, you know, what's the right thing to do now for Greece to make sure that it starts growing again, and that it's ultimately able to uh, come back into the European economy and pay its obligations. Uh, I think that uh, there are the possible elements of a deal uh, that would give some flexibility to this new government over time to change the priorities a little bit uh, while reassuring the European creditors that uh, they are going to get paid I mean, again. But there are other countries in Europe that have borrowed money. Some already borrowed, some could borrow in the future. I'm just thinking that, well, why wouldn't they raise their hand and say, wait a minute, if, if Greece can change the terms of, of their loans, I'd like to change mine as well. Wouldn't that be a fair thing to say? Indeed, some of the other countries that went through programs with, uh, with the European institutions, with the IMF, uh, Ireland, um, certainly the finance minister of Ireland made public statements saying that he was uh, going to take a hard line on this. Uh, those countries feel like they have done what uh, they had agreed to, and therefore they don't want to see the terms changed. Yeah. But I think everybody understands that a deal has to be reached, some flexibility, some reasonable flexibility has to pr be provided. I think it's important also that we look at the positive news that are coming out of countries such as Ireland, which is now growing at 4%, uh, but also Spain, uh, which grew by one and a half percent. I mean, last they're not year. in the news, and that's good news. And that's exactly right. They're coming back into normality. Of course, they still have very high unemployment. They still have a lot of things to do. But I think they're coming back into a more normal situation. Portugal is also giving some good news. Um, so, um, in some ways, uh, some of the policies that are part of these agreements seem to be working. And here, here's the other big thing that a lot of people, well, some people are talking about, the euro. 
whether or not Greece should even be in the euro. And there's been a lot of talk. Now, they haven't explicitly said it, but they insinuated that, look, if we don't want to deal with this loan thing and we want to cancel the whole thing, then they can just leave the euro, euro altogether and they can do their own thing. Now, we all know that that, at least in the short term, is devastating to the economy. But is that a realistic possibility, in your opinion? I think it's extremely unlikely that uh, Greece would leave the euro. I think it's, it's completely, uh, would be completely unexpected by me. Uh, I certainly would say that the future of Greece and its creditors is inextricably interlinked, even regardless of the fact that they're in a currency union, because the amounts that have been lent and borrowed uh, are so large that now their futures are <laughs> they're, bound together. They're too together. big to fail in, 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 in many In some respects. ways, yes. They are, they are married. Divorce is very difficult. Um, Paulo Morrow, thank you very much. Um, Senior Fellow Peterson Institute for International Economics helping us uh, explain what Greece wants and uh, what a positive outcome might be.